after after the game, Nick Nick talked about uh, a missing link from the practice field to game day in, in, in the passing attack. When when you think about what is happening on the practice field and what's happening on game days in the passing game, what do you think is a potential missing link? I, I think when you play against good defenses like we like we have these last couple of weeks, you don't get the full speed pass rush, having to slide in the pocket and make a throw. And I think all that timing and rhythm that goes into when you're playing teams that are going to match you up outside and you got to be on time. I think all that stuff is, you know, probably what he's most likely talking about. You know, he's got to be able to move in the pocket and we got to be able to protect a little bit longer and we got to be able to be able to make sure we're on time and where we're supposed to be with the route. So that, that part of it is really hard to duplicate in practice. You do your best. Um, you know, all off season and in training camp, but when you get into these scout team type of roles, you, you know, those things don't necessarily happen. Uh, but we got to do a better job of creating those for them. What, what's been a point of emphasis for you with the wide receivers to, to do their part and, and boost the, the passing attack right now? Um, it, for, for them, it's just making sure they're detailed in what they do. They need to be where they're supposed to be and when they're supposed to be there. That's the most important thing. If, if something seems off to a guy who's maybe not spinning it that day as good as as he can, then that messes it up even more. And so uh, tight ends, running backs, receivers, everyone has to make sure that you know, they're doing their assignment right. If they're doing their assignment right and they're in the right place at the right time, then that just makes, you know, takes a lot more off the quarterback. Coach Moorhead's mentioned his three keys to the passing game with protection of throw and getting separation from the mm-hmm. trainers. How do you coach separation? How do you coach a receiver to get that separation? Well, again, it starts with getting off the ball and then it's talk, you know, the next part is the stem. And, making sure that our footwork is exactly what it's supposed to be. And then you get to the break point and you have to handle your break point details. So we'd work on that stuff every single day. And I think everyone in that room has gotten a lot better at it. Um, but then when you tie it into, again, with moving parts, that's probably more as, uh, as much as anything. You know, guys seeing something for the first time or having to react to defenders, now your typical on-air uh, timing is off. And then now you have to do a better job of creating that same situation for your guys. And then so now Nick gets comfortable with whoever it is, the running back, the, the tight end, or the wide receiver. So we, we've done a really good job of trying to create those in the last few weeks, honestly, of trying to get those situations created for them in a, in a live scenario. What's going to be the biggest difference Saturday from when Nick comes in to when Keaton comes in? Not much, honestly, not much difference. I, I mean, uh, they're, they're very similar in style of play. Um, uh, Nick obviously has a lot more of experience, so you, you would think you can do more with him, but um, the, the types of things that you'll see getting done aren't going to change. I mean, they're both really good at what they do. So, At what point in the week will a playing time split be determined on that front? I don't think it will be. I don't think it will be. I think we'll have a generality of what we want to do. Um, and that goes with you know every position, honestly. We sit down together as a staff on Friday and come up with, you know, here's what we – you know, we, this is the, what we think we want, and then you always have to go with how the game is going. And uh, so I would, I would not put anything in concrete uh, anytime soon, no. What are your impressions of A&M's defense? Oh, they're really good. I mean, this is number two in the nation on third down, and uh, they are an attacking, aggressive group. You know, the, the line movements, the, the way those guys get off the football, the linebackers are downhill players. Um, they, they really stress you out. And then on third down, they do a, a really nice job of creating schemes that really challenge your protection. So they present a big challenge. You know, big tall guys on the outside of corners and two safeties that run around uh, really well. So they're, they're really good defense. There was a lot less of that pre-snap motion we saw against Auburn in the LSU game plan. Was that just something you felt LSU would be ready for and, and would game plan against? What made y'all get away from that? No, I, I mentioned it last time we were here together. You do whatever you have to do to get the defense to, lay, you know, to line up the way you wanted to. And we felt like you know, LSU kept it pretty simple and lined up the way we, we, where we felt, you know, we should be uh, successful in what we're, our approach was. And we weren't good enough uh, executing our assignments. I mean, we got down to the five-yard line. We felt like we had three out of the four calls were really good uh, that, should have, that should have scored, and we didn't execute it well enough. So uh, we felt like we got them not necessarily where we wanted them, but we had them lined up to where we felt like we could have plays that we should, that we should have been executing. You mentioned timing in, in the passing game. What are some of the mechanisms within the, the offense that force timing to, to be on pace? Does that, does that make sense? Like what mechanisms within the offense make timing easier? Uh, I mean, first of all, it's just running the ball effectively and then you know, trying to create plays that come off of those types of runs. 
I think that puts a quarterback in rhythm. I think that puts an offensive line in an advantage because now the, the, the defensive line is thinking run. So they're not necessarily aggressive up the field. And then that, you know, again, that helps the quarterback's footwork match up uh, with, the, with the wide receiver's footwork. So I think running the ball is critical, obviously, for our success because we're really good at it. Um, but obviously, the better we are at that, the better we're going to get in the passing game. Uh, they, they really go together.